morning guys, welcome to day 8 of rchelicopterfun.com's flight school. Uh, today we're going to be doing large circuits around the pilot's fixed position. Uh, it's going to be, we're going to start out just like on day 7, and uh, we're gonna, gradually going to be making the circuit around our position larger. Uh, obviously we've gone up to the uh, bigger size uh, T-Rex 600. If you can see the windsock in the background, we're, we're getting quite windy right now, but you'll see it's quite stable with the larger machine, but uh, my guess is we're 15 gusting to about 20 right now, kilometers an hour. Um, before we start, first off, uh, this is when um, I strongly recommend you stop using that really tame throttle and pitch curve, especially the pitch curve, because we're going to be getting into translational lift in faster forward flight, and with that really tame pitch curve, um, you're going to have to reduce your throttle dangerously low uh, to reduce um, altitude. So you want to control today's altitude with pitch. So that's why I recommend using your um, mode, uh, flight mode one. Um, again, I cover that in my uh, ebook on the setup. Uh, as far as uh, what to set your uh, throttle and pitch curves up for uh, flight mode uh, one over normal, or stunt one, or idle up, or whatever you want to call it. So we will uh, we'll first start out by talking a little bit about translational lift as well. Um, I'm going to get the bird into a hover here. Again, I've still got the training gear on. It's just a good idea for a nice visual orientation. Today you are going to be taking the bird up higher and further away from your position. Um, if you crash today, it's going to cost a few bucks. So, uh, but if you're comfortable with um, all the lessons you've done up to this point, especially day seven, getting familiar with that uh, tail in or that side on orientation, Today should be not too bad, pretty easy actually. So we'll get it up into a good three, four foot hover. And like I said, we're going to start talking about translational lift. So what I'm going to do here, I'm not going to give you any added throttle or collective. Oops, start looking the bird forward and you'll see it gaining altitude. And I'm not even touching my throttle or collective. And what that is caused from is we're introducing clean air to the rotor disc and it's making the lift more efficient. And there, you saw the opposite of translational lift when I was coming back, uh, going in the direction of the wind. I lost the wind there. I really had to give a lot of, uh, I had to give a fairly good increase in throttle and collective. So again, let's get it uh, you know, a couple feet in the air. I picked it forward not touching throttle or collective at all and you'll see how it's gaining altitude just by the increased speed. Now when I come back it's going to drop like a rock unless I increase my throttle and collective. So I just wanted to uh, make sure you understood that phenomenon of translational lift because today we are going to be noticing it quite a bit especially if you're flying in a windy condition. As you're flying into the wind the bird's going to increase in, in height, and as you're coming back, it's really going to drop. So you have to be uh, prepared for that. So we'll get it to uh, start off just by doing a... Um, well, one other thing I should mention too, today is great if it can be overcast. Uh, the last thing you want is to fly this thing between you and the sun and get blinded. So. It's not the best uh, situation for us today, but I'll try to keep it low and keep it out of the sun. So we'll get it, uh, we'll start uh, moving around in a counterclockwise rotation again, because that's generally the easiest to start with. And we'll just practice a few circuits from day seven. And you can see even in this much wind how much smoother the larger machine is. Very nice and stable. And what we're going to do is slowly make the circuit bigger and higher. And what I'm doing here, I'm holding on a little bit, a little bit of left tail rotor. If you get disorientated, 
Up, get the tail back pointed towards you, tail in, or shift your body to point in the same direction as the, as the heli. And we're giving some forward cyclic, trying to keep the speed under check. Keep giving some left tail rotor, a little more forward cyclic. Now, I'm not holding forward cyclic continuously, I'm just giving the odd little nudge forward to get it moving forward. And we're going to get the circuit larger, probably going to be going out a good 100 feet or so. That's why you need lots of room. You're getting it up higher. You don't want to get it too high because of that sun, as I mentioned, but if you go out on a cloudy day, that's ideal. You don't want to get going too fast or you'll get dizzy. But the whole idea of today is to introduce you to faster forward flight and that just really feeling comfortable again with that side-on orientation. And what you're eventually going to want to do when you start moving fast enough Start giving a little bit of left cyclic as well to bank the heli. So now we're not only giving forward, we're also giving some left. And you can see that really easily on with the uh, training gear on. You can see how it's banking. And we're in a little bit of a tight area here. So I'm going to actually make this these loops a little um, oval shaped seeing that we're, we're tight on the sides. Again, we're bringing it over, banking it, bringing the tail around, pull back on the collective if you think you're going too fast. Get the tail around, holding in cyclic. little left cyclic, bring the tail around, and you'll find when you start banking like this, you're actually going to have to be pulling back on your cyclic to keep the nose up. If you just turn, the nose is going to drop. So again, you're giving left cyclic, pulling back on aft cyclic to bring the nose up. And ideally, you want to be doing a nice round circle, but uh, we're a little bit tight here on the apron. Again, bring the nose up. Now, there's nothing saying you can't fly an oval circuit. It just it will help you better, though, if you're, if you're constantly holding in a complete circle around your position because it would be, it's easier to get a feel for it. But, uh, if you've got a longer, skinnier area, so we're holding in left cyclic, pulling back on the cyclic to bring the nose up, holding in left tail rotor. So that's the uh, clockwise or counterclockwise circuit. Now we're going to try uh, we're going to try the clock clockwise. So again, we'll start off the same as we did on day seven, nice and close. And you might want to find you might find you want to start giving a little right cyclic just to get a feel for banking the heli a little bit over. There was a gust of wind, or we lost complete translational lift there. That's why it got, that's why it lost all lift. So you have to be a little bit quick on the uh, collective. So again, we'll start uh, making these loops bigger. Nice and smooth. I'm holding in more right tail rotor because it doesn't turn as easy to the right. This is harder for most people. Again, this is why the uh, that training gear really helps. You can see those those little orange balls are really really nice to keep keep tracking tracking the heli. And again, we're making these uh, long oval circuits around our position. Don't want to get too high there because of the sun. 
if you ever feel like you're getting disorientated, quickly get the tail pointed towards you, tail in orientation, regain your composure, just relax, get it back into a nice hover, and start feeling comfortable again, start introducing your side on orientation, a little bit of forward cyclic, a little bit of right cyclic, a little bit of right tail rotor. forward, a little bit of right cyclic, we're pulling back on aft cyclic now to keep the nose up in the apex of the turn. For all you airplane guys, this is very natural. If you're coming in, pull back so you can keep the nose up, otherwise the nose will come down. So you want to keep aft cyclic to keep that nose up. And. Uh, so this is essentially our first kind of fast circuit day. Even though we're flying around our position and uh, you don't want to do that. Again, because of sun problems. But this will uh, introduce you for day nine when we start flying larger circuit figure eights with the sun behind us and we don't have to worry about it. So that's what today is all about. If one direction starts feeling more comfortable than the other, work on the other direction. I, uh, I made the mistake of always flying counterclockwise because it felt really comfortable and I could, I had a really hard time flying clockwise. So if you're finding clockwise is a lot harder, just stick with it and keep practicing it. You know, practice the low close in circuits. If clockwise is really giving you a hard time. And then as it becomes more comfortable, Start increasing the diameter of the loops. You know, really you want to be over soft grass again today. But we've got the use of the airport, so uh, nice scenery out here. It's hard to keep an eye on the helicopter when the scenery is so beautiful, but uh, that's what today's all about. And with that, we'll land the bird and uh, keep practicing those. When you're really feeling comfortable, Let's get to day nine and get into some real flying. See you then.